A wealthy woman came across a young boy peeking through the window of a famous burger joint, looking famished. She decided to treat him to a burger, only to meet him again the following day, this time in front of her house with the rest of his family. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing and joining our family to make it bigger and bigger. Also activate the notification bell to never miss an update. Sandra Williams was walking down a busy street in downtown LA after taking herself on a shopping spree. As she sipped on her iced cafe latte, she came across a young boy standing near a burger joint, peeking through the window. As she got closer to the boy, Sandra realized that he was clutching his stomach and looking at the food with great desire. Do you want one? She asked, standing beside him in front of the store window. Surprised that someone had spoken to him, the boy looked at Sandra and nodded his head. Their food looks really good, but I don't have any money for it. He replied quietly. That's all right. Today's your lucky day then. Sandra smiled. I'm quite hungry myself. Come join me for a meal, she said, pulling one of the burger joint's outdoor chairs and placing her shopping bags on it. Really? The boy asked. When Sandra nodded her head, the boy, who introduced himself as Elliot, excitedly sat down and looked around in amazement. He had never eaten in a restaurant before, so the entire experience was new to him. Once they were settled, Sandra told Elliot to order anything he wanted from the menu. After browsing it for a couple of minutes, he ordered a double bacon cheeseburger, french fries, and a strawberry milkshake. You have great taste, Sandra commended him. I'll have whatever he's having, she told the waiter. Sandra observed Elliot while he was sitting down realizing how happy the boy was to be where he was. She could tell that he was a kind, simple boy who likely struggled in life. While waiting for their food, Sandra decided to strike up a conversation. I saw you looking at the window, and it looked like you really wanted a burger from here. Is it your first time trying this restaurant? She asked. Yes, ma'am. I always walk past this street, daydreaming that one day, I'll get to try all of the restaurants here and shop from all of these expensive stores. Elliot admitted, my family is having a difficult time right now, so we usually only get to eat twice a day. You don't need to call me ma'am, please just call me Sandra, she corrected him. I'm sorry to hear you guys have been struggling. Sandra suddenly felt uncomfortable that she had just spent hundreds of dollars on clothes when there were people like Elliot struggling to eat daily. Do you live nearby? She asked him. Elliot nodded his head. My family and I live in an abandoned building nearby. We don't have a lot of money because my dad is a cripple, and my mom takes care of my four younger siblings at home the entire day. She doesn't have time to work, he revealed. Really? Sandra said, saddened to hear about the situation Elliot was in. What does your dad do? She asked. In the morning, he goes out on the street to sell his creations. He is a great artist, so he makes sculptures and small novelty items with the plastic bottles and foil tetra packs he finds in the trash. Elliot told Sandra, he can paint too, but since he can't afford art materials, he just creates art out of the trash he finds. This impressed Sandra a lot because she was an avid art collector herself, and by the way the proud son was talking about his father, she was sure that the work was good. Sandra wanted to help him and his family. So she decided to open up about her own life in hopes of gaining Elliot's trust. She wanted to make him feel comfortable around her. You know, I recently lost my husband. She told him, we never had any kids because we focused on our careers too much. To cope with the loss, I started to collect artworks. I would love to have your dad make some pieces for me. Elliot's eyes lit up as soon as he heard this. Really, you would trust him to make some sculptures for you? Sandra nodded her head. Yes, I would love that, sculptures, paintings, whatever it is he can make for my house. You see, I live in a big empty house. Ever since my husband died, the house feels so dull and devoid of life. I want to add some color to it, Sandra shared. If you and your family are free tomorrow, I'd like for you to come over. This is my calling card. You'll find my address there, and here's a $20 bill. I hope you can take a cab to my house tomorrow, and we can talk then. How does that sound? Elliot took the calling card and the money, nodding his head. We'll be there. Thank you, Sandra. This means a lot to my family, and it's going to help my dad earn money. I'm sure he'll be delighted. He hugged Sandra. At that moment, 
their food suddenly arrived. Elliot was so happy that he kept thanking Sandra for treating him to a good meal. They both devoured their burgers in silence, savoring every bite and complimenting it with their fries and milkshakes. When they finished, Elliot hugged Sandra again. Thank you, Sandra. I never thought I'd get the chance to eat here. He told her, I can't wait to tell my parents about you. I promise we'll be at your house tomorrow, he said before waving goodbye. The following day, Sandra prepared for Elliot's family's visit. While she had no assurance that they'd show up, a part of her was confident that they'd show up that day. Although Sandra had not prepared a meal for other people in quite some time, she was excited to dust off her recipe book to make lunch. She chose to make her specialties, particularly baked spaghetti and chicken parmesan. True enough, shortly before lunchtime, Sandra's doorbell rang. She opened the door and saw Elliot with his parents and four younger siblings. Hi Sandra, Elliot said, waving at her. Hello Elliot, you guys came. Thank you for coming, she said, greeting everyone in his family. I'm Sandra, please come in. Sandra was happy to have guests in her house. She hadn't invited anyone in since her husband passed away. She placed the hearty lunch she prepared on the dining table and Elliot's family happily devoured it. You make delicious food, Elliot's mother complimented smiling. Thank you for inviting us over. It's not a problem at all. I'm glad I met Elliot yesterday. He told me all about your family, Sandra replied. She didn't want to say much just yet because she wanted them to enjoy the food. But once they were through, Sandra started to propose something to Elliot's parents. I'm not sure if Elliot has told you, but he told me that you were quite the artist, sir, she said to Elliot's dad. I'd really love to liven up my home. I just feel adding sculptures and paintings would make this structure feel more like a home, and I'd like to hire you to make some for me, Sandra revealed. Elliot's parents, Mia and Roger, couldn't contain their emotions after hearing what Sandra said. They were both in shock that someone so wealthy would trust them so much to create pieces for her mansion. Of course my house is quite a commute from downtown where you live. There are free rooms in my home. I would love for you to stay with me while you work on the art pieces. Sandra added. Sandra's offer was too good to be true for Elliot and his family. They couldn't believe their luck, and they couldn't help but cry at her kindness. Not only did she offer Roger a job that would help them save up for the future, but she also offered them a free place to stay while working. Although Mia and Roger were hesitant to accept the offer because they weren't sure Sandra would like Roger's work, Sandra insisted that they accept her offer. Eventually, they did and Elliot and his family slowly moved into her home in the next couple of days. Roger made a couple of intricate, well-crafted sculptures and paintings, which he closely worked on with Sandra, who would tell him about her preferred designs and color schemes. While they lived in the same house, Sandra and Elliot's entire family got to know each other better. Sandra and Mia would prepare their meals together and eventually became good friends. After Roger's works were completed, Sandra paid him a hefty sum, which he wanted to decline. After all, she had been so gracious to them by giving them a comfortable place to live and food to eat for a couple of weeks. However, Sandra refused to take no for an answer. She handed him the money and asked him to use it to jumpstart his savings for his family's future. When all the works were up, Sandra started to invite her neighbors over. She introduced Roger to them and soon, more and more people started to hire him for their art commissions. At first, Roger wondered how he'd be able to accommodate the work in the abandoned building they lived in downtown. But before he could ponder the thought, Sandra asked his family to keep living with her as she already saw them as her own family. After some thinking, they agreed, with the condition that Sandra would allow them to help out with their daily chores and to pay for their monthly groceries. They didn't want Sandra to feel as if they were taking advantage of her kindness, so they wanted to contribute one way or another. Since then, they became a happy collaborative household. Sandra helped Mia take care of her children and run the household, while Roger continued working as an artist to earn money for his family. If you enjoyed this story, you might like this one about a beggar who gives half of his pizza to a hungry rich man, only for the businessman to give half of his business to the beggar. A wealthy businessman found himself hungry and without food in the middle of the night. He comes across a poor man who gives him some food. Months later, he repays the kind man for what he did. 
Arnold was a successful restaurateur who went to a small town on a business trip. He was to have a meeting on the city's outskirts, where he planned to renovate and revamp a failing restaurant business to make it profitable again. The meeting was set for 10, 0 p.m. at the current restaurant owner's home. This was so they had enough time to close the restaurant and head home to meet with Arnold. While waiting, Arnold suddenly began to feel his hunger. The owners messaged that they'd be running late, so he decided to walk around the neighborhood to find something to eat. All the cafes he passed through were closed, save for an old abandoned restaurant called Sean's Pizza. Desperate for something to eat, Arnold decided to enter. However, as soon as he did, he realized that the restaurant was not operational and hadn't been for a while. Despite this, Arnold wanted to take a look around. He liked the pizza parlor's intricate interior design and realized that it must have once been a successful restaurant because of how it looked. As he took a look around, the door suddenly shut behind him because of a gush of wind. The slam caused the building structure to shake, and a piece of the ceiling fell on Arnold. The piece hit his head, and he immediately lost consciousness because of the impact. When he woke up, he was slightly confused about where he was. He took a look around and noticed a shabby man standing next to him. He sat up and decided to talk to the man. What happened? How long was I unconscious? He asked. The man who introduced himself as Steve shared that Arnold had been knocked unconscious for about half an hour. I was at the back room of the pizza parlor when I heard the door slam. I went to check it out and saw you unconscious on the floor. A piece of the ceiling fell and hit you, Steve explained, handing Arnold a bottle of water. What were you doing inside the back room? This place looks deserted, Arnold replied, taking the water bottle and gulping it down. Well, I live here actually, Steve revealed. My father Sean used to own this pizza parlor, but he died long ago. I couldn't maintain the restaurant so I closed it down. Now, I'm left begging for alms on the street. I'm sorry to hear that you had to close down your business. The place looks as if it was once very successful. I would have loved to try your pizzas, Arnold admitted. Steve smiled at him, shaking his head. Well, sir, today is your lucky day. I was making a pizza for myself using my father's secret recipe. We don't cook pizzas in an oven but in an open fire, making them very tasty. A generous woman gave me some cash today, and I was able to buy ingredients. Come with me, Steve said, leading Arnold to the back. When they got there, Arnold was amazed at Steve's simple setup. There was an open fire built with wood and a piece of metal on top where he placed the pizza. After a couple of minutes, Arnold was able to get a taste of Steve's creation. He was impressed. It was the best pizza he had ever tasted. That night, Arnold went to his late night meeting with a full stomach. While the restaurant owners spoke, his mind wandered off and he kept thinking about Steve and his pizza. Despite his lingering thoughts, he honored his promise and bought the restaurant from its current owners. He vowed to make it a fine dining fusion restaurant, the first in the area. A couple of weeks later, Arnold's revamped restaurant opened successfully. Lines circled the block and reservations filled for weeks. Knowing the restaurant was fully operational and could now stand on its own without his full supervision, he went on to pursue something he'd been longing to do for weeks. On a Monday morning, Steve woke up to the sound of construction materials being carried into the abandoned pizza parlor. He came out of the back room and found several workers in their hard hats, including Arnold. What are you doing here? Steve asked Arnold. Why do you have so many materials with you? Arnold smiled proudly. I bought the plot of land we're in. Since the loan was not paid off years ago, it was named a government property. Now I'm building a pizzeria that I know families will surely love. This angered Steve, thinking Arnold was taking advantage of his poor situation. How dare you disrespect what my father once built? He yelled. I am not trying to disrespect you or your father Steve. I am trying to honor the two of you. I'm naming the restaurant Sean and Steve's Pizza. Arnold told him. He thought Steve would be pleased, but this made him even angrier. Don't you dare run a pizzeria under my father's name. Do you think simply naming it after us would honor us? He shot back. Steve, I'm not going to run the pizzeria. You are, Arnold said, patting Steve on the back. You see, I couldn't stop thinking about the pizza you made a couple of weeks ago. It would be a pity if you kept this secret recipe to yourself. The world deserves to get a taste of the best pizza ever. 
Steve realized that Arnold was giving him the opportunity to bring his life back on track, so he began to listen with an open mind. Arnold told him that he was going to manage the operations of the pizzeria while Arnold remained a consultant and investor behind the scenes. What do you get from helping me? Steve asked Arnold. Well, Steve, I am a restaurateur. I invest in restaurants, and I want to invest in yours. We split the profits in half. This way we are business partners, he explained. This sounded like a fair partnership to Steve. With Arnold financing everything, he could focus on building the menu and cooking the best pizzas in town. Before they knew it, the pizzeria had regained the popularity it once had. Like Arnold's other restaurants, people lined up for hours to taste their delicious pizza. Steve saved up enough money to buy himself a good apartment, thanks to the success of the pizzeria. He no longer had to beg for alms and had enough money to live comfortably. Thank you, Arnold. You changed my life, Steve told his business partner one day. Arnold put an arm around Steve's shoulder and shook his head. You helped me once, and I helped you. Consider us even, he said with a smile. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment to let us know your thoughts. Your support means the world to us and helps us to continue creating quality content. Thank you for being a part of our family.